Hey, so what I'm going to do now is take a minute and walk you through a dive. First thing up, we're going to leak test our gear. So we're going to dunk it in the, the rinse bin there inside the boat. Make sure there's no bubbles coming up. Good check. We're ready to move on. Now, as the dive gets started, most people think that they're going to get their first underwater images during the dive, but I always like to get a few actually on the way out. Here's another great angle. I like to get the boat in the water. Now we're getting ready to get in the water. And that first jump in, if you can be in before the people you're diving with, you can get images like this one here, where you're getting half in, half out, over under as they call them, of the people you're diving with. So try to get in first and always aim back at the people that are coming in after you. The next thing is that on, the, on your descent down to your dive, there's normally going to be a line that's used to secure your boat or a buoy to where you'll start your dive. And if you use this right, you can get a great diagonal line running through your image like this one here. So always be looking for those opportunities to frame those on your dive or those going in the water with you with things that are already out there and that are stationary because those make really great um, those make really great additions to your images and they can add a lot of power and a lot of a sense of movement by having those diagonal lines going through them. So here we are and we're starting our dive together and I'm just going to kind of walk you through how I would approach this dive. Now I'll say that the dive is quite a bit longer than what you're going to see. This video is short, but it's going to give you an idea of how I would approach it. First thing here is this tire uh, wheel that's in the water. I would try to look for ways to use that creatively. The next thing I'd look to do is if my dive buddies were having some fun there, I'd probably get a few shots of them. But then here we're approaching a really interesting fish because of its colors. And what you can see is that it lets me get really close. And in the past, I've used this opportunity to photograph these fish that have great color. So here, if you have a strobe that you're bringing down with you, and here it's getting cleaned by a wrasse, but goat fish is what those are typically called, uh, make for great subjects because of that. Here, we're coming up to a scorpion fish, which is very dangerous, which is what my guide is telling me, and also very hard to spot. They have uh, spines on them, and there it is just in case you couldn't see it, that have venom sacs that as you step through their spines, normally it's a step injury, you can really get hurt. But here's what they look like up close if you're able to get some uh, photographs of the flash. They're some of my favorite subjects because of their color and texture. So I wanted to just show you that. But be very careful if you approach them for any reason. Now unfortunately I didn't have my camera with me, I had my video camera with me because there are two sleeping white tip reef sharks, which I would love to get some pictures of. In this case, I'm going to settle to show you how I would set up for the shot, which would be right here and probably not getting a whole lot closer since they're resting. The next thing I wanted to show you was this outcropping and the fish. You see those schools of fish and that kind of structure that's coming out and the jagged edges of it? I really like that because it can set up for some beautiful shots and here's one of my favorite that I did exactly that. I found a structure that I like with good coral reef and good color and I wound up just waiting there for the fish to come by. Next is a turtle. And you can see two turtles actually down here enjoying themselves while they're resting. Now again, you really need to respect the wildlife that you find. So I would not approach and not molest, touch or disturb these uh, turtles in any way. But wanted to show you that when they're sleeping down here, you can get some really fantastic images of them because they're generally pretty accommodating of cameras and flashes. So great subjects if you can approach them from interesting angles. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a, another turtle and my dive buddy there. And I wouldn't really get much closer than what he's at, but if you're able to frame your dive buddy with a turtle, just a great idea maybe to get a picture for doing that. Now, what we saw down there was a little fish that I'll show you pictures of at the end, but can be very uh, a very good subject. Here is a moray eel. Now you can see its mouth opening and closing, and a lot of people think that it's because it's trying to bite you, but really that's the way it moves water to keep circulating so it can breathe. So there's pictures of its mouth open and closed here in some of these pictures, and it makes for a fantastic subject because it's docile. It allows you to get fairly close, and as long as you don't mess with it, it's a safe subject to work with, and it continues to open and close its mouth there so you can get some really dramatic images of it. Eels are some of my favorite subjects for just that reason. Again, respect them, approach slowly and cautiously, um, but if you do, you are able to get some great images of them.
Now, the next thing up that I want to talk about is this second moray eel that we found there. They can be a bit challenging to see because they blend in so well. And if you're really lucky, you'll find one swimming out in the open to get an image of. But there's two moray eels that we found in our dive that I'm going to show you and some images of how you can capture the beauty of those eels. Okay, so as we're progressing along in our dive, something kind of interesting is going to happen here in just a second, which is basically this fish is going to photobomb me by going right through my camera. Now, that'll happen to you sometimes, and if you're clever, you can get an image like this where it just approaches you and you're able to get it. So keep your eyes open and your camera ready for opportunities like that can, because they can be really fun. Now the dive's ending here after a great dive and again we've got that line going through the camera and if I were shooting still images I'd be clicking away right now maybe making some noise to attract my dive buddies. Now here I want to show you some images I've gotten in the past that you can look for. Here's coral reef and the polyps on it that can be really great but fragile so please be careful. This is a pincushion starfish and they've got wonderful textures and colors. So don't be fooled just because they're stationary. Next, anemone fish, which not only have fantastic colors, but generally allow you to approach pretty closely. So be respectful, work your end slowly, but they can be great. A fire goby, which just has great colors and tends to be pretty stationary if you ever find one. A dangerous subject there, a person in your picture, um, but if you're diving with somebody, that's a great way to get some images. And here's that little fish I said you'd see at the end, which tends to make, again, great subjects. So, I hope walking you through my dive, showing you some example images, is going to get you excited for underwater photography. Because what we're going to do next is we're going to explain how, uh, the theories and concepts I use to get these images myself. And what I hope to demonstrate there with this video of my dive. It might be helpful after the class is over to go back to this video and check it again. Just in case you have any questions or you want to see how I apply the principles we're going to be teaching next.